Guys, there seems to be some tension with Johnny Bones Jones and the UFC brass. He's asking to be cut, and he's asking for $30 million. Nick and I are talking about what's going on right now. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, yeah. So Nick, uh, John Jones and the saga of drama continues with the UFC brass. Um, Hunter Campbell, uh, in a conversation with Hunter Campbell, rather, John Jones came out and said that eight to $10 million would be way too low for a fight of this category between him and Francis Ngannou. Not really clear on whether he means eight million when it's all said and done, factoring in pay-per-view buys or eight million base pay. Uh, just for a point of reference, Conor McGregor had the biggest base pay of all time, and that was in 2018 against Habib. He was paid $3 million, and that pay-per-view was by far the biggest UFC pay-per-view in history, doing almost 2.5 million pay-per-view buys. John, in contrast, has never cracked that million mark. Him and DC, the second time, did about 850, 860,000 uh, pay-per-view buys. So what do you make of some of these antics and these requests by Johnny Bones? Uh, very strange. You know, you weren't, I wasn't really expecting this type of uh, uh, negotiation tactics out of John whenever the, the Francis fight and the Stipe uh, finish happened. I was expecting, obviously, he's, he's pretty um, active on social media, on Twitter, especially on the night of the fights, and even a little more so when the heavyweights are in there. And it just seemed he started chirping from before the fights happened. And then late into the night, he was up on Twitter talking. And uh, he just seemed to be, you know, rattling off all kinds of crazy things from being down to fight to not being down to fight to being uh, depressed and angry with the uh, the way the UFC treats him to asking for tons of money. So he's throwing a lot of uh, mixed signals at us. And I don't really know what to expect. I feel like the UFC is going to have a difficult time coming to terms with somebody that's acting like this and uh, is kind of being vocal and having this dispute out in public. Whereas, you know, if that's the way he's going to act, in public in front of all the fans to see imagine how he's going to be in a, in a, in a business room when they're, when they're actually having a meeting, he's going to be even more demanding. Yeah. You know, and it certainly seems like as soon as that fight happened, as soon as Francis got the KO mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously the stage was set for a huge mega fight between Nganu and John Jones, us obviously knowing Derek Lewis living in Houston and training at the same gym, we're like, man, this kind of sucks that, uh, you know, John's going to get the nod here, but this is a mega fight. So I get that the business of it, the mm -hmm. UFC would make this fight. Now it's looking more and more like there might be a Derek Lewis fight in between. And even if the John Jones fight happens at all. Yeah. So I think it's kind of up in the air. Dana White keeps insisting as far as what I can read that John Jones is demanding $30 million for this fight. Uh, again, not clear whether that's base pay or, um, you know, with pay-per-view when it's all said and done. But his team is using Floyd Mayweather as an example, saying, you know, some of these, th this fight would be of the magnitude of a Floyd Mayweather fight. But then when you look at Floyd Mayweather, he's got the two big, he's the pay-per-view king. You know, Floyd does make that amount of money, 30 million plus, even, even up to 100 million. But when you look at it, one, Floyd promotes himself. He's under Mayweather promotions, not another organization. So that's one thing to factor in. The other thing to factor in is that Floyd has by far the two biggest pay-per-views of all time. Mm -hmm. Manny Pacquiao did on, close to 5 million pay-per-view buys, the Floyd Pacquiao, in a fight that, quite frankly, was well past its prime. Imagine what that fight would have done had it been when both fighters were in their prime in their early 30s. And then the Conor McGregor fight did, I think, three and a half, almost 4 million pay-per-view buys. And then again, comparing that to John Jones' 860,000, I just don't see the ground to stand on for Jones. Now, I do think that this fight would probably double John's biggest pay-per-view draw yet because it, the, the dance partner does matter. Mm -hmm. And Nganu is a scary guy. He's the predator. He's got all of Africa behind him. We've got three outstanding African champions. Now, MMA is becoming really popular there. He's the kind of guy that resonates with people all over the world. His story, the way he fights, everything. He's, the pre he, he's absolutely a super marketable fighter. I think that this fight would land somewhere in the 1.5 to 1.7 million pay-per-view buys. Again, not getting close to the Conor Khabib. 
And you have to remember too, Khabib has the, Connor brings a tremendous amount of fans. Khabib brings the entire Muslim community. He's the most famous Muslim athlete in the world. I just don't see this fight being that big. And I don't see John being able to demand the sort of money that he thinks is rightfully his because of his GOAT status, because of the resume, all of that. But at the end of the day, the UFC is a business and it exists to make money and they've got to make this fight make sense. Yeah, I agree. And make no mistake about it. There are major stars in this sport and then there's everybody else. And the major stars are Connor, you know, now Jorge Masvidal, Nate Diaz, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Yeah. Nobody else even comes close to touching them. And John Jones is no exception. He's not a star like they are. And he does really well. Uh, 850, 900,000 pay-per-view buys is a great night of business. The UFC is always going to be happy with that. But when you start talking about the guys that can crack the million and Conor McGregor cracks a million every time he does any sort of a fight, uh, it, it's just a different level. And you know, when you see somebody like John Jones trying to negotiate like he's somebody who does better numbers than Conor McGregor, it just makes the UFC look at it and go like, okay, well, you know, if you're going to act like that, we're just going to go in another direction because, you know, we were kind of talking about it. And I think that everybody kind of agrees with the, the notion that every single direction you can point Francis Ngannou right now is a, is a good direction. Yeah. yeah. Point him at Stipe for a rematch. Everybody's going to be okay with that. Point him at Derek Lewis. Everybody wants to see that rematch and point him at John Jones. Everybody wants to see that happen. So th it's not like John has some sort of, um, you know, one way road that, it, you know, Francis kind of has to climb. Right. Through. He can, they, they can literally just pivot and go another direction and leave John hanging in the dust you know, you, you kind of see that happening at 155 where everybody was a, a, a avoiding Michael Chandler. Right. And so it's like, well, you guys are shutting down these roads that are potential great fights for him. And so the UFC has no other option but to lead him down the title fight road. And I feel like that's what John Jones is doing. He thinks that like he's going to play hardball with UFC. The UFC is like, no, this is a sport. It's bigger than all the athletes and uh, we're going to keep moving forward. And by the way, we have some really great fights that people definitely want to see. And while you do say that 1.5 million is something that you're estimating the, the heavyweight title fight uh, bringing next, uh, I would venture to say that it, it's probably in the realm of 1 million to 1.5 million, whether John's in there or Derek Lewis is in there. I think yeah. that the heavyweight title fight will break a million when, whenever Ngannou defends for the first time, but it doesn't matter who the dance partner is. If it's Stipe, they're breaking a million. If it's uh, Derek, they're breaking a million. If it's John, they're breaking a million. And I don't see him going over 1.5. So, uh, you know, I, if I was the UFC and, Der and I had John playing hardball with me, I'd just play right back. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, I think that of the three potential opponents, because of John's resume and a lot of people knowing who John is outside of just MMA fans, you know, he's kind of a guy who people, oh yeah, John Jones, he's that fighter. He's mm -hmm. that guy who was a great champion, right? So people know the name. There's name familiarity. UFC fans absolutely know who Stipe Miocic, Derek Lewis, all of the top guys are. But right. John Jones kind of has a more of a name recognition throughout the world in general. So I do believe believe that John would be the biggest of the three fights pay-per-view wise, but I believe that Derek is an absolute close second. And I agree with you, Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou breaks a million pay-per-view buys. And quite frankly, I think there's some fun parody and a good time to be had for literally the two scariest guys in the world who laid an egg the first time they fought, yeah. getting back in there again and trying to right the ship. I do think that there is a story there. There's an ability to sell there. And I think that I, there's two things. One, Dana White and John Jones have had a tumultuous relationship for a long time. That's well documented. Mm -hmm. Two, John Jones has demonstrated some of the most self-sabotaging behaviors that we've ever seen inside the UFC. Yeah. I mean, he would absolutely be the runaway goat by, by a long shot, by a country mile, if it weren't for some of his behaviors and some of the things he's done and the picogram drama and the hit and runs. And the, but, you know, he just keeps tending to step on his own foot. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you look at that and factor in the fact that Francis Ngannou, 
said, I, he's, I'm 34 years old. I want to be the greatest heavyweight of all time. Francis looks like a guy that could compete for another five, six years at the top level, probably up until the age of 40 if he wants to. So he's, But if he wants to be the best heavyweight of all time, he's got to get going on the title defenses. He can't fight once a year and keep this division grinding to a halt like it has been for quite some time now. And largely that was because Stipe and DC were sorting through their business, which that was wildly entertaining. But for everybody who's not named Daniel Cormier or Stipe Miocic, it kind of sucks. Yeah. So I think Francis wants to make this a, a, a sort of, he wants to be rather an active champion. And I think he's going to, you know, call the, the matchmakers and say, look, guys, I lo would love to fight John. But at the same time, I don't want to wait six months for John and you guys to go back and forth on Twitter. Derek Lewis very jokingly said, eight million, I'll do it for eight million. Right. Obviously, Nobody's getting paid $8 million base pay to do this fight. Like I said, that would be more than double what Connor got paid for the right. Habib fight. Right. And, and everybody has a contract. I believe Derek Lewis is happy with the, the contract that he's got with the UFC and is willing to honor it and not be a thorn in their side when they're right. trying to bring, it, bring this fight to the table and, bring, and give it to the people. We all want to see it. Uh, Francis probably really wants to get that rematch back. He uh, Not only did he lose the fight, he kind of embarrassed himself by right. being so gun shy and not willing to uh, engage with Derek Lewis. So I feel like there's some, there's a part of him that really wants to get that fight done. Of course he wants to fight John Jones. If you're the champion of the world, you want to test yourself against the absolute best. But if you want to be the greatest of all time, you also got to start racking up some wins as right. the title holder. And, uh, you know, Fra uh, John Jones on paper is probably the most difficult matchup Francis will have a a as the heavyweight champ. So, it's it's a tough it's a tough um, situation yeah. for for Francis to be pick and choosy about it. He kind of just has to accept whatever they give him. It's going to be a great fight either way. I think Stipe is kind of the distant third place for who's going to fight uh, Ngannou next because he's going to need some time because he needs a little bit of time off. And I don't think he needs to do any fighting in between now and his next title fight. Of course, that's probably what will happen in all uh, in all actuality, but. I do I do think that Derek Lewis every day and every tweet is getting closer and closer yeah. to, to signing this deal and finishing this, giving Francis something to work forward to and and uh, work towards, I should say, um, in the next three or four months, you know, start a, start up a training camp. Derek Lewis, I'm sure he's ready to start up a training camp. Yeah. And they don't want to sit around and while John Jones is you know, having a soap opera drama with the UFC. Yeah. And, and John's also saying, you know, just cut me already. Just cut me from the, from the organization. Cut me from your roster. And I just want to know where he thinks he's going to go from here. If he retires, that's one thing. That, but what he's saying is show me the money or, right. or cut me. And if the UFC is not willing to show you the money, you know, show you the $30 million or whatever, where does he think he's going to go to get that? Because, as of right now, the UFC really is the only company in all of combat sports that's able to pay fighters what they pay them and add, let them in on pay-per-view points and right. things like that. Don't forget that almost no other mixed martial arts organization uses pay-per-view anymore or even you know does any paid-for fights. Right. It's a subscription based on a streaming service or it's just free right. on, on whatever platform or channel they're on. So I, I don't know where he thinks he's going to go. Obviously, the big names are one, uh, one FC, Ryzen, Bellator, or you know maybe go try his hand in boxing. But I don't see any of those no. options paying him anywhere close to what he's even currently getting. Uh, to fight in right. the UFC right now. Well, who's? I mean, what are you going to go to Bellator and and the heavyweight champion there is Ryan Bader. Yeah. You're going to go fight Ryan Bader? Yeah. I doubt it. The light heavyweight champion is Nemkov, yeah. the Russian guy, phenomenal fighter, right. no name recognition whatsoever. Like those aren't crossing you, half a million buys. You have to have a dance partner. And the dance partners for John, especially when you look at the heavier weight classes, you know, there are some some organizations out there that have phenomenal, um, you know, lighter weight classes. But when you look at light heavyweight and heavyweight, the UFC is the show. Yeah. The UFC heavyweight champion is the guy. And so there's no there's no other organization. Like you said, maybe boxing. But what's he going to go box Deontay Wilder? Maybe he'll get some money for that. But I, I just don't think that that's a likely outcome. What I think should be the, if I was John Jones's confidant, and if I was a friend of his or a manager, I'd be saying, look, we think we can beat this guy. John's obviously confident and comfortable that he can beat Francis. 
what we need to do is we need to go, we, we need to be reasonable in negotiation. And the thing, the, the reason that Dana always wins these negotiations or he wins most of these negotiations is because the first rule of negotiating is that you have to be willing to walk away. Yeah. Dana White is willing to walk away because if he walks away, he's got Derek Lewis. Yeah. I'm sorry, that what, what a constellation prize, quite frankly. And everybody, everybody who watches his channel knows that we're totally biased because we train at the same gym Derek Lewis trains at. But even if we didn't do that, I would just as a fan, I'm a perfectly happy customer. Take my 70 US dollars mm -hmm. and give me the Derek Lewis versus Francis rematch. So the ability to walk away in a negotiation is everything. Yeah. And if there was, you know, if there was some mega star in Bellator that John has never fought, that's chirping that he might be the best light heavyweight or one championship had a guy that was just this, you know, it was like a Fedor Emelianenko in his prime type of situation mm -hmm. where, okay, maybe there's a mega fight to be had there. Then you've got some sort of negotiating ground to stand on. But as it sits right now, it, you know, Dana White's in the driver's seat here. He's yeah. got the ability to just make a, a fight that's going to do a million pay-per-view buys and he can tell John to kick rocks. And, you know, we know Dana doesn't care for John. And, right. and so that that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with this. Yeah, and you know, everybody that watches fighting and has been watching fighting and, and was around when Francis fought Derek Lewis the first time and, and they kind of laid an egg, it was a dud, it was a boring fight, uh, feels that those two guys some some way kind of owe us the matchup yeah. that, that we fantasized about. Everybody was talking about that fight and nothing has changed other than the rankings for both of them have moved forward. Right. Everybody still knows them as the two scariest guys in, in fighting. And they're, they're the heaviest handed, they're the strongest, they're the scariest guys, no doubt about it. And we were expecting just an insane fight. And I don't believe they'll lay two eggs in a row. No, I no. think the fight that we expected to get out of them will be what we get the next fight. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. I see John Jones currently kind of being like a, a more difficult version to deal with than what Leon Edwards was doing over the right. past couple of years. And what the UFC did was they just said, okay, if you don't want to fight these people, no problem. We're just going to go over here. And then eventually Leon starts going from, I'm not fighting him. I'm not fighting him to just give me somebody to fight. Right. And John Jones, when you take away any negotiations from him and you just say all right dude you just take your ball go home we're gonna go over here and play then that person goes well wait a second i'll actually do what you want me to do and i don't think john's in any position right now to retire and i don't think mentally he wants to retire i think he wants to continue he wants to grow his legacy and everything like that and fighting is how he's going to have to do that in the ufc that's the only way to solidify himself as the greatest of all time which i think is attainable before uh, t obtainable for him but you know if he doesn't get on board with the UFC then they're just going to leave him in the dust yeah you, it's a situation where you go from demanding to desperate right real quick and I'll just play the devil's advocate here and I don't mean to you know I'm actually a fan of John Jones I, I think he's a spectacular fighter I think he is his own worst enemy a lot of times mm -hmm. um, and I think that he's got a lot of good fight left in him so it, this video is not to say that I'm I dislike John or I think that he uh, you know should be cut of, of course not I think just the opposite I think he should fight Francis Ngannou for a reasonable amount of money. But let's look at, you know, what John's done lately. Mm -hmm. What John's done lately is he had a very tough outing with Dominic Reyes. A lot of people thought he lost that fight. Yeah. He had a very tough outing with Tiago Santos. Some people lost that fight, mm -hmm. think he lost that fight. Not many. Uh, and then when you look at what Derek Lewis has done lately, you tell me what's the harder matchup for yeah. John Jones or for Francis Ngannou right now. Because, and I know MMA math doesn't work, yeah. but Dominic Reyes handled John Jones for a decent portion of that fight and then got starched by Jan Blahovich. Mm -hmm. So if we were talking about Jan Blahovich moving up and fighting Francis Ngannou, who would be clamoring for that fight? And also who would predict Jan to win? I love Jan, but Jan doesn't win that fight. Yeah, I don't think so either. And yeah, Kurt, uh, Derek has obviously done more heavy lifting, more impressive things in the sport oh, as of recent than John Jones. John, you know, his lengthy body of work is the reason he, right. uh, he is where he is and able to skip the line. And nobody's really going to get that upset if, if John were to say, you know what, pay me the million dollars that I always make to fight and, and give me, throw me in on some pay-per-view points and I'll go fight your guy. But uh, if he's not going to do that, they're just going to go another direction. And, and Derek Lewis is a deserving 
uh, top contender that is exciting, has a win over the guy who is currently holding the belt, which, you know, Francis is say does have some weight to it. And I bet sure. you Francis wants to get that win back as soon as possible. So uh, for me, I, I feel like the UFC should just kind of turn its back on John Jones for a moment, move forward with this fight. He'll watch it happen and watch it kind of pass him by. And then by the end of the year, maybe the, the and new or and still heavyweight champion will give him a crack at the title uh, at the end of the year. Maybe it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching our video. Please let us know in the comments, how do you think this situation is going to go out? It's honestly a little bizarre. I didn't really even know how to read some of these tweets. It's, it's, it's a strange time in the heavyweight division in the UFC. Please let us know in the comments. We love talking with you guys there. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification button if you enjoyed the content. And we will see you in the next one, guys. Peace.